<laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Alchemist Inkwell. This is your spiritual podcast for grounded people. I just started twitching. <laughs> that was very distracting. I look good to say it all nice. And I was like, Yeah, grounded. That's not people. fun. <laughs> yeah, we're super we're grounded. In Pisces, how grounded do we all feel, really? Not at all. Uh, <laughs> no I feel sort of grounded sort of grounded is good I've been grounding with like water recently which has been very nice and helpful like if I can stand outside when it's snowing I'll be doing that I went to the hot springs that was really nice when I with the full moon stuff we did some shedding with some water like it's been a lot of watery type grounding which is mm-hmm. another type of grounding it's still ground like people don't think about it but it's still grounding into earth you're still doing water that, on so. the ground. <laughs> mm-hmm. if water touches the ground um but yeah it's it's which you know right i see energy i guess coming through with that um yeah it's it's feeling very grounded at the moment it's feeling very mercurial in that like there's a lot of dissociation i think was the the word that i was using earlier and it's funny because when we get into our bookend segment of this episode, I'll talk a little bit more about the source text that I'm using, which is a modern source text about um, dissociation and the gray line that you can walk between dissociation and spiritual uh, experience Mm -hmm. and how high expression, spirituality, low expression, dissociation, and an excuse not to feel your feelings. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Mercury right now is like, which one do you want? Choose wisely. Mm -hmm. I will also say too, um, this association isn't always bad. Mm-hmm. It's a skill. Sometimes it's necessary mm-hmm. um, from personal experience. Yeah. Um, and even just this week, I've been, I've told Krista, I've been literally just crocheting like a mad woman while listening to books, which has been really lovely. It's been really grounding. It's been really nice to disassociate from everything. I've produced a lot of stuffed animals. <laughs> um, but it's been like, consciously and intentional dissociation yeah. not like avoidance so yeah. i do think there's a balance there well you're not hiding from your emotions with it no you're just no. giving yourself time to rest which is totally totally there the uh the thera- clinical disassociation is the one i'm referring to from the book yeah no for sure but just for the any of you who all of a sudden yeah. are like oh no oh my gosh no i'm not I- supposed to dissociate <laughs> When you're in the doctor's office and you're having something done that you know is going to hurt, you disassociate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you come back and it's fine. But like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right? Freaking hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is just, this is something that made me um, cry over the weekend because it was a very emotional full moon. Did you see that there's now going to be IUDs for men that get local fucking anesthesia and narcotic support after the fact? No, but what I think is funny is you knew I was talking about IUDs. <laughs> uh-huh. I know. Yeah, well, of course I knew that. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I cried. I was like, are you, hey, they get local anesthesia for an IUD? Like, not I just the thought- nurse's hand to hold? What? I have thoughts. I have opinions. I'm going to keep them to myself because this is a public platform, but I have thoughts and I have opinions. <laughs> I'm not keeping them myself. That's some fuck. They should totally get that hundred percent. Absolutely. No one should be in pain, but women should get it now and first. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, those are my thoughts. It made me cry this week. I think it was very emotional because of the full moon. Mm-hmm. Um, very frustrated. Frustrated energy. Um, also, this, the, the main topic we're talking about on today's podcast, not which is not that, that by the way. <laughs> um, this past, honestly, for me, it's about, we've hit this mark where it's about two weeks, but it, it really started to pick up in the last week. I have been personally tagged in 20 plus videos um, on multiple social media platforms of people having very paranormal and very spooky experiences kind of out of nowhere, air quotes. Um, And these are not, and I want to be really clear, all these videos, none of them have been spiritual creators. None of them have been people who post in spiritual anything. They've all just been like random beauty creators or like lifestyle stuff, or someone's just like posting a get ready with me or whatever. And then they have something spooky happen. 
um, in that space and people are freaking out. <laughs> like people are having a really hard time. And even as I posted about kind of this sort of stuff, almost every comment has been like, oh my gosh, I thought it was just me. I was waking up every night at 3 a.m. to someone yelling at me. Like, you know, this was happening or I saw this thing in the woods. My son had an experience. So we're going to talk about um, protecting your space. Yeah. Uh, really way more in depth uh, than we have kind of before. Because even if you have warded and protected your space six months ago, those wards are no longer effective. And I mean that truly. Um, our vibration, especially in the last couple of weeks, um, Rebecca James, so Bruja Bone, uh, was talking about this too, of how instead of us trying to like navigate and gather the timelines, the timelines are now just merging on their own, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting because I've basically picked up on that too. And I think you have as well of like the timelines are now merging on their own, which means rapid and very, very, very um, noticeable shifts in vibration, which is all that is to say is the stuff that used to be things that very few people would be able to interact with are now showing up and interacting with us kind of en masse, like on a very large level that um and not all not all bad things i'm not saying like it's just the spooky shit but sometimes the stuff that we're thinking is terrifying is also not terrifying so just kind of keep that in perspective but that goes for a lot of the crossover realm critters like that goes for a lot of the um you know lower vibrational things beneath us now kind of having some energy to come up as well versus the higher vibrational things starting to come down that goes for higher self experiences people are understanding more with spirit guides um, a lot of these interactions are really picking up and it's exciting in a lot of ways. Yeah. We're stoked on it, but also we want to make sure you're safe because with that, the old wards and that old ward vibration are just really bypassable. Yeah. And it's, it's easy. Like a, a good analogy would be like a lot of people are sharing space in a way that they weren't before because mm -hmm. you know if they were separate and now they're, they had like the same almost tangible space, but now they're all converged that mm -hmm. same space that had four different segments to it is now in one. So you're sharing yep. more space than you were before, which is really neat. The community in, in a way is growing, but also you got to be careful about who you decide to talk to and who your friends are. Yeah. Discerning. Yeah. There's been a lot of like audience specific picked up things that have been happening. Like lots of people being like, is there a mimic or what is happening on because someone will be just like sharing something and all of a sudden like you'll hear someone yell at them from the other room. Like you'll hear it on the video and they're like, yeah. And they're like, wait a second, I'm home alone. What the fuck? Like, and then they get freaked out. It's been a lot of that kind of thing or like interference with technology. And again, it's just because there's so many things sharing one space and they're trying to communicate and connect whatever, which is cool, but it's less cool if you don't want them there. <laughs> yeah. A lot less cool. Um, that being said, before we even talk about how to like ward and protect your space, I do just want to say, if you want to tap into more things, now is a fabulous time. Um, you're going to get a lot of response yeah. and it's very interesting how much validation is coming up from other people. Like things that I talked about with you guys, you know, you and Rebecca and Aaron mm -hmm. and Matt, um, at sacred spaces have now been validated through other people who have channeled in very similar things that are talking to me about them. I'm like, Hey, I was just having a conversation about this exact thing and channeled the same thing as you. So it's really cool to kind of have that compounding effect happening quite quickly. But if there's things that you feel drawn to right now, they're like, I really want to try to channel in this, or I really want to try to have ghost communication. Or, I really want to talk to deities, um, and all those things. It's really cool time to do that. Like it's a really yeah. neat time because the energy is way less resistance. There's yeah. way less resistance. But I also recommend kind of like what you were hinting at, don't feel like you have to do it alone or wing it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The one thing I am so glad of that I was really frustrated by like 10, 20 years ago was the time between not being experienced and being experienced and gaining all that experience, mm -hmm. but having gained experience and you can do it now because when I was learning, there were not many mentors available. So there was no mm -hmm. fast road or efficient road or mm -hmm. you know, spare yourself the mistakes of others kind of road uh, to take. Now there are people who are willing to teach you and you have to be equally discerning about that. Um, but if you are someone who likes this podcast and likes the people who are on this podcast, we mm -hmm. offer multiple opportunities where you can immerse yourself in a deity work. We have deity Academy launching, um, like hey, next week, Monday. Yeah. yeah on Monday. Monday on the 4th mm -hmm. of March, mm -hmm. uh, 
you'll be able to join Deity Academy with us. It's going to happen and start really kicking in in April. It's a four month thing. We also have Japan where you can travel in person with us and learn about spirituality and connecting specifically to nature and the spirits of nature and those kinds of things. More trips to be announced, but that's the one that's available right now. Um, and then yeah. of course in the fall, Forgotten Storytellers, if you want to channel in in a safe way to be able to heal through story. Like there's mm -hmm. so many ways you can do it. So figure out what way resonates with you the most and then find the people who are doing it and and see if they're your people. Yeah. That's part of the reason, honestly, we decided to do Deity Academy right now is mm -hmm. because it's so much easier than it has been even last year to, to connect with deities at this point in time that we don't want people to feel like they're just going to go and flail by themselves and they don't won't have the tools to understand the communication they're getting, et cetera. So that's why we also are doing Deity Academy at this point in time so that you can have a foundational understanding of how to communicate and work with deities because a lot of people are feeling incredibly drawn to that, which awesome. They're having a resurgence of energy themselves. So it makes a lot of sense that people are feeling more pulled to doing deity work. And we just want to help you with that. So through our own channeling, getting you messages you need, plus giving you tools on how to work with the deities and Sorry, background sir. information about the deities and their myths and stories and their context. Um, so it's really cool. So like Krista said, it launches on Monday, the fourth, um, and there is limited spots available, but basically it's four months in each each of those four months starting in April, we will be focusing on a different pantheon of deities and channeling in and talking to those deities on a call in real time with all of the Deity Academy peeps. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also going to give you like supplemental reading and resources to prepare you for that channeling, to do your own channeling after the fact. Um, we, we might get the Phasma box involved. Like there's a bunch That'd of different stuff that we can talk with each other. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a group where you guys can discuss and make reads and channel in different deities in that pantheon um, yourself for that month and communicate with each other and be like, hey, did you get this? Or I'm working with this deity or whatever it is um, and see how that comes up. So it's just kind of like a deity support group, to be totally honest, mm -hmm. um, with us guiding and channeling them in and actually speaking to them for you, which is something that we both do all the time, really casually in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, I was very recently was just checking it's really funny when something comes up, I'm like, oh, I wonder who did that. And like going through all of my people and like talking to a bunch of different deities and be like, who did this thing? Um, it's that level of casual for us. So we just want to share that with you, uh, especially in this time. So if you're interested in that, um, the launch will be on um, Monday the 4th and it will be on the Forgotten Storytellers website. So mm -hmm. ForgottenStorytellers.com. And then there, there'll be a little little tabby that says Deity Academy. And you just click on that and that'll give you all of the information as well as how you can enroll. Um, and again, it's limited, so don't wait. <laughs> yeah, the website should be launched also by March 1st. So if you want to check it out mm -hmm. by then, there will be links in our bios uh, when it's available. And by the time this episode launches on Wednesday, if you're on Patreon or Thursday, everywhere else, you should be almost there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're really excited about it. We're really yeah, excited about yeah. it. It's a perfect time. It's, so fun. it's going to be so fun. And it's it just, I can't stress, like two years ago, this wouldn't have been as fun. No. It's because the energy was harder to work with. It was a lot more walking through jello. Now we're walking through, you know, light puddles. And mm -hmm. that's a very different energy. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's going to be really cool. And you're going to get so much benefit out of it. And just understanding on how you, you can channel in and, and work with things in the universe and what they're thinking about this time of where we're at and all of it. So it's really neat. I'm very excited about it. Um, so on that note, let's talk about ways to award and protect your space. Krista, do you want to kick us off on that? Yeah. So um, I have several ways. And in fact, I do encourage multiple things. So I've got in my house, you know, I do the energetic ones where you can visualize, you can use actual tools and you can use uh, charms like written words, spoken words. And there's just so many things you can do. So I employed literally all of it when I moved into my new home. Um, mm -hmm. And I think one of the things I would start with is the um, walking around with something that you can use to uh, fill the space and sort of, um, I use frankincense. So I'll light like a frankincense, either you can get a bundle from a holistic shop responsibly sourced, uh, or you can get a frankincense incense and you just walk around and allow the smoke to fill the corners. The corners are really important. I also mm -hmm. recommend when doing this, people always forget this, crack a window open because the negative stuff that you're getting rid of can have an outlet somewhere. So crack the window open and let the negative stuff out as you are cleansing the energy of the space uh, with your intentions. You can sing a little song about 
positive stuff being allowed to stay, things that are not aligned being, you know, having to find somewhere else to exist, which is totally fine. They can exist. They're wonderful. It's just not in this space. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's one thing that I would go into. And then of course I've got, I've got my, um, the spikes, iron spikes at the different cardinal directions in my, around my house that I also, um, kind of blessed with a blessing that I actually found in my little grimoire here, if you want me to share it. Yeah. Yeah. You should totally share it. That's a great idea. Yeah. So there was none on here. That's like, when you're putting spikes in your yard, do this. But I have railroad spikes that I got from my local uh, metaphysical shop. First of all, the owner of the shop cleansed everything before it went on sale, which is great. I also cleansed and acquainted myself with the energy because we know that a lot of historical things, especially rusted spikes from a railroad will have history to them. So mm -hmm. you thank the energies that may still be attached to them, reconcile, cleanse, and then sort of charge it for your intentions. And what I used was the um, protection of one's house and hearth charm, which I found in Omens, it's called Pow Wow's Long Lost Friend. I stick with Long Lost Friend because Pow Wow is really a misnomer and some people will dis disagree with that and I won't. Um, so I believe mm -hmm. that pow, pow Wow was a misconception. It was something that when people came down from the north, more northeast and found people doing brocharai in Pennsylvania, they compared them to what they had seen native people doing in other places and they gave them that name and it stuck. Um, mm -hmm. I works for me. So long lost friend by, um, Holman, H O H M A N George Holman. And simply it's beneath thy guardianship. I am safe against all tempests and all enemies. And you can do this in the, um, they use three J's at the end to signify the father, son, Holy spirit kind of thing. I like to think of the God as creator, God as compassion and God as wisdom. It removes binaries and it removes patriarchal issues from it. Um, but mm -hmm. that's also from my background. So I'm not sure <laughs> as the effective outside of a Christian mysticism uh, thing, but I do know that Brahari is an open practice. So you are welcome to use it. And I think you'd be welcome to adapt it to the uh, energies that you work with as well. If you feel like calling upon Hestia or someone like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, and I will say, I burying things in your yard if you have a yard is awesome you can also just get little pots of dirt and bury things in them and put those in the corner of your house or the cardinal directions of your house on the windowsills or whatever if you're not in a place with a yard that works just as well so like I don't want you to think like oh man I don't have a yard I live in an apartment like that's totally fine um I also when I lived in a condo um, to put protection above all of my doors, I actually took a pencil and wrote um, little runes or incantations or affirmations on all of my door frames. Um, Cause again, I was in an apartment, like I didn't do a lot of stuff in the yard outside, anything like that. So that was a really easy way to do it. And then when I left, I just erased the pencil, um, which is a totally val valid and valuable thing to do. Uh, highly recommend doing something like that. And remember, words have power. They don't even need to be super special, perfect recipe words. It's just mm -hmm. words in general have power. So whatever feels the best for you as far as incantation goes or um, affirmation or like uh, only good energy here or, you know, I, I install a filter that burns anything that comes through little flames you draw or whatever. Um, it's it's up to you and and what kind of feels the best for you. So again, I say with your with your thing too. It's like yeah, if that feels the best for you, perfect. Well, Use that. Yeah, and I've said told this story before so many times. The charm that I used to get this house, mm -hmm. <laughs> in that ridiculous housing market, started out as housing housing come to me, and I turned it into a song and then made it my mm -hmm. own, and that's what made it work for me. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's a couple more in here that I actually I have one in my garage to prevent fire and theft. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but I couldn't find it when I went through the book. So I might've gotten it from another book, but I do also have one against evil spirits and um, all manner of, now it's all manner of witchcraft. I would say all manner of malefic intention mm -hmm. magic, um, because I do know that there is a difference. I acknowledge that this person who wrote in like the 1800s didn't acknowledge it as much. Sorry, but we can do better and we do. So, mm -hmm. uh, this one's actually fun because it comes with something you would write as like a charm, almost make creating a paper talisman out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it of course has Christian underpinnings to it. And then the um, the 
invocation is all this be guarded here in time and here and there in eternity. So here in time and there in eternity, which I thought was really cool because it covers yeah, so many layers of basis. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's a cool way of wording that here in time and there in eternity. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. And I do just want to say too, um, there isn't a cleansing component. So I recommend, um, as Krista was mentioning, cleanse your space, whether that is with sound or smoke or salt or just energy visualization, cleanse the space, protect the space, um, get all the stuff out and then protect it. Um, and remember you're spookier and scarier than anything that's in your house. I promise. Um, so make sure that you remember that and stand in your power in that space. The other thing that's important to remember, especially when protecting your space is that you're not doing it by yourself. Like you have guides, um, that can help with it truly. So if you want to ask your guides, like, Hey, whoever protects my space, I need you to amp this up. Like, I need you to make sure that nothing comes in, uh, period, you know, or like, please station, station outside. If anything tries to come in, shove them out, which my guides are always on on task to do um, is to shove anything out that might want to try to come in. Uh, so that's a, a really important piece to remember as well of like, Hey, this is a no-go, like shove stuff out. Um, if it doesn't, if it wants to come in, that's not allowed. And so you don't always have to be the one that's focused on it. And that being said too, you can also do a lot of visualization stuff to protect your space, to keep your space. So whether that is you close your eyes and you build up earth walls all around your home or surround earth, like put, put yourself in a little hobbit hole in your home. Like your home is now in, in a hobbit hole of earth. Um, you can totally do that or bringing in light from creator of all that is from theta, from that center of the universe, pulling that energy down and surrounding your house in that light and sparkling energy. All those things work too. Um, those ones you tend to have to do a little bit more than a physical one. Um, I recommend if you, those are the type of words you want to do, if you, if you most aligned with doing a, a protection in that way, do it maybe once a week, once every other week, mm -hmm. just to keep it amped, just because the energy of that large of a space being upheld does take some additional consciousness. That's yeah. like my only caveat. With it. Well, and other things that you can do to really go around and cleanse the space that also feel quite protective is if you have a good bill. You can ring the bell throughout your house. It'll cleanse mm -hmm. the space. You can clap your hands. It's a very similar thing. Just the mm -hmm. clapping itself will cleanse the, the energy around it. Um, but I have a really good bell that we got for sacred spaces that I now use a lot because it's got a really good tone. And whenever something negative is around, I go over and I ring that bell. It makes me feel so much better. I used it the other day when I wasn't feeling well. Um, my husband had someone uh, sort of a, he works with the city. So there are people he has to interact with who sometimes cause a lot of energy hooks for him. And mm -hmm. uh, we, we ring the bell <laughs> when there are mm -hmm. rough things. Um, but another thing you can do, which I really love, I have a plant next to my door. You've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, that cleanses the energy of people as they walk in. So it's kind yeah. of like a ward on the doorway. Yeah. On the note of cleansing the energy of people as they walk in, our big evil eye we got in mm -hmm. um, Greece is right in front of our door. That is a really helpful thing for cleansing yeah. people when they they come through because they have to walk past it and it cleanses literally cleanses all their energy it absorbs any negative whatever they're bringing in uh, which is very helpful also cinnamon sprinkling like <laughs> sprinkling cinnamon and then sweeping up <laughs> oh no he hangs out he does his own thing fighting no but I, <laughs> he does apparently he apparently fights <laughs> off little mouse fae so <laughs> that's a whole thing he looks like okay He's such an interesting looking thing. There is a, this is the only thing I can think of that's even remotely close to how he looks, which is not totally correct. So I don't want you to like think of that, but there's an anime called Blue Exorcist and there is a little kitchen demon in Blue Exorcist. And that is the closest thing. It's not exact at all, no, but I it's the it. closest thing I can get to of what cinnamon looks like. I love Blue Exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I love it too. But like when I was like, how can I describe how he looks? That is like, it's not exact, but it's very close. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So just if anyone wants to know what I'm talking to, he looks kind of like that, um, which he said it was fine for me to share that. So I'll share it. Cause again, it's not exactly what he looks like. Um, but it actually sprinkling real cinnamon, taking sp real cinnamon, sprinkling that and salt in front of your door and then sweeping it up cleanses that energy too. Um, or putting it right outside, like on your welcome mat. And mm -hmm. then people walk through that helps too. Again, that might make it a little bit messy, but it does cleanse the energy or even selenite above your doorframe yep. of the, all of the doors in your house that lead to the external spaces, selenite um, or satin spar, satin spar works just as well. Um, that will help 
also. Yeah. Brooms mm -hmm. uh, also help. You can sweep mm -hmm. the broom to sweep energy just as you would anything else. Like I've been doing a lot of things in my Patreon the last couple of weeks of how cleaning and magic work together. And um, mm -hmm. using a broom is very mm -hmm. ceremonial, very sacred. It has a lot of history and is considered good for grounding, cleansing, and even protection. So uh, someone actually suggested this to me recently and I love it. And I immediately implemented it. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's such a good idea. You can, so first of all, you can always talk to your house too. Like mm -hmm. be like, Hey, always. please protect me from this. Please don't let these types of things in. Cause your house holds a lot of energy. It has its own consciousness. Amazing. The other thing you can do is you can either ask your house for its name and not tell anyone else its name other than the people that live in it, or you can give it a name and not tell anyone else other than the people who live in it, the name. And so therefore it protects the space. Names are super duper strong. Names are a big deal because they're something that is just a this layer of the universe kind of convention that we created basically. And because we created names, they matter. They matter on this plane of existence. They hold a lot of power and weight in um, ancient Egypt. They actually believed it was one of the seven parts of your soul was your name. It's mm -hmm. like a big deal. So in naming something and giving something a name, this is a great example. Hermes the <laughs> fucking hamster. But in giving, <laughs> in giving something a name, you give it power. And so by either identifying your house's name or giving it a name, you give it additional power to hold its own boundaries, to keep itself safe, to protect and shield against things. Um, so that is an important thing to kind of note as well. The other thing I want to say on that, though, too, is you don't need to block everything out of your house. And I don't recommend blocking everything out of your house. Like, obviously, if I were to block everything out, like I wouldn't be able to talk to my guides on a regular. I wouldn't be able to have conversations with Cinnamon or the other little fairies that live in this room that we're sitting in right now that are looking at me from across the room that I'm acknowledging um, or, you know, anything like that. Maybe you have a past loved one that likes to visit and you like having them come in to visit. I mean, those types of things. You don't want to block everything. You just want to block the things you don't want. So figure out first what those things are and then do anything we've talked about in alignment with blocking out those things um, so that you don't just completely shut yourself off. Because I've seen that happen too, where people are like, I don't know why I was talking to my guys and all of a sudden I can't hear them unless I'm outside. And I'm like, oh, I have a clue why potentially who that was is you shut them out because um, you didn't want anything to mess with you in your house, which is fine, but you, you might want to not do that. Mm hmm well, yeah. And there's, there's something to be said about, again, with the names, you're giving acknowledgement to something. So you're mm -hmm. saying, I acknowledge you as, and I, as it, as your own independent thing, self mm -hmm. and to energy or whatever. So you're respecting it and then giving it the ability to respond, to interact. There's a, a deep level of trust that goes with knowing a name. Uh, it's a huge yeah. thing magically in all levels. Yeah absolutely it's it's a big deal <laughs> big deal mm -hmm. um there is and we've talked about this before like give your body a different name than yourself which is great mm -hmm. um definitely do that but also there's names that i will introduce myself to spiritual things using that are not my name in this or not my higher self name it's just they may introduce myself to spiritual things using and things like that. Like you can have layers of names that have different purposes mm -hmm. that can be really, really beneficial in a bunch of different ways. Um, and they can be used very intentionally to protect you, to give you more magic, to, um, you know, magnify your energy. I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can do with, with your name basically, um, that is very, very empowering. Cause yeah, they're a big deal. It's an identity deal. Spell. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. You know, your little letters matter to you. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. Yeah. So Get really attached to represented by their name or has changed their name or has chosen their name. Just so you know, that was magic. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, yeah. So those are just some examples, some ways. Now, if you do find something spooky is happening in your house or something seems to be in there first, Try to ask yourself, is this, am I just scared of it because it's a spiritual thing that's happening? Or is this something that is negative that I don't want to like, which one? Um, and then you can cleanse the space with some of the tools we gave you. You can also just straight push something out, mm -hmm. um, which I think sometimes people forget, like plant your feet on the ground and just whoosh some energy, like push it out from you and shove that thing out of your space, outside of your wards. Um, and then re-up your words and lock it down. Like you can absolutely do that. We all have that ability. You can give things the option to leave on their own before you shove them out. 
Um, you can ask your guides to take them out for you. You can ask your guides to take them to a different entire plane of existence for you if they are a really yucky thing that are, is harming anyone. Um, so just do your powerful that's nice because I think that's really important. Yeah. And if you're someone you like that, I do a lot of that kind of work in dreams. It'll come yeah. up like I'll be in the house. And I remember last year we were in our previous home and there was this thing in the house. And I remember in the dream, I was able to like truly call in help from a higher. Oh my God, Callum just peeked out from behind you. I was real. just like, what are uh, you doing, buddy? Call in help from like a higher energy. And then <laughs> with that assistance, I was able to like push the thing to the door, close the door and like close the window and ward it. And mm -hmm. the whole house felt different physically, even in, in the waking world. After that, yeah. I do a lot of that kind of work in dreams. Mm hmm yeah yeah it, you, lots of stuff that way in dreams for sure I also want to say like there's a balance between doing like psychopomp work which is kind mm -hmm. of just helping ghosts go to where they need to go helping beings that are down here go to where they need to go um which is a lot more of like a choice and giving them a space to go if they want to and stay if they want to and protecting your space mm -hmm. um sometimes you can work with the the stuff in your house and sometimes you're like nope everything must go. Um, and that's okay. Cause you are the physical person occupying that space for right now. You can give them a space to go or somewhere they would like to, or you can just shove them outside and be like, figure it out yeah. or wait around outside until I'm done living here. And then you can come back in. Well, and that's an important thing for people like us who do consultant work and mm -hmm. client work or people and their guides and their energies and their loved ones from our homes. So mm -hmm. one of the things I have is spiritual office hours. Mm -hmm. There are certain things Same. I do that indicate to energies that I'm available. You can come into my space now. And then when I'm done, there are certain things I do that say I'm not available. I'm resting, mm -hmm. I'm reading, I am going about my life. And yep. that is okay. If you come up with your own little steps, they don't have to be traditional magic or anything like that. It can be like, if I have set my coffee down on my desk, we are in like office hours. If mm -hmm. I've taken my coffee mug to the sink, it's over. Something as easy as that. Or yeah. instance. Yeah, having an on-off switch is really important and boundaries in that way is really, really important so that things know when they can talk to you and when they can't. That's how I do like the rooms in my mind. Like my mediumship room is not open unless people ask me to open it, basically. Unless someone mentions on a reading they want to talk to a past loved one, that door is shut firm and locked and barred. And I don't care what time of day it is. They cannot just come talk to me unless I open it on purpose in a reading. Past loved ones aren't talking it's just not happening because I don't like doing that type of work a whole bunch of the time. I don't mind doing it in readings. That's fine. But like, I don't want that in my space. <laughs> I don't like it very much. Um, it ends up just being a lot of unresolved trauma getting thrown. I don't like it. It's not fun um, to be open that much. So I keep that pretty locked down. Can do it. Don't want to. <laughs> and that's, you know, important to do too. So understanding what you're willing to have. That being said, like my guides can talk to me literally anytime. Like I don't limit them because they don't ever really talk to me in the middle of the night unless it's in a dream space anyway. So other than that, I'm like, I don't care. Talk to me whenever you need to talk to me. I will be available. Other people's stuff? Nope. Don't want to talk to my kids' guides all the time. Don't want to talk to my husband's guides all the time. Those are shut down unless I'm intentionally tuning in. So yeah, that's another really, really important point. So good job, like, bring that up because I think that gets overlooked sometimes, especially as you're getting more and more into spiritual stuff. You're just like, you have to be always tuned in. You don't. Yeah, I used to, and I still, I, they still use it because they used it on me last week or the week before when I got the new guide energy that came in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a an indication feeling, like, give me this feeling in the center of my forehead if you need to talk to me and I need to tune in. And then I can say, it's kind of like ringing me up on the phone. The phone mm -hmm. is ringing. I acknowledge the phone is ringing. I get to say, I'm paying attention. What do you need? Or I can say, nope, I'm trying to sleep try again later. <laughs> Leave me but, alone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that time it was really cool uh, what happened. So I'm glad I like, I'm glad they used it. And of course that person, that energy would have used it. It makes sense, but. Right. It makes, makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It tracks. Yeah. Um, cool. So this is also a bookend episode that I want to make sure we get a chance yes. to talk about. Oh, yeah. oh, time flies. Um, since time is flying by and we both read a lot <laughs> Awesome. shortest month so, of the year most reading yeah um i have been crocheting and disassociating like i mentioned um 
like nobody's business. I've created two little like pastel colored baphomets. One you can see if you're watching the thing, he's like mm -hmm. hanging out over there. I've made a chicken. Here's my chicken. I love this chicken. It's so cute. It's so stupid. <laughs> It's so dumb, but I love it so much. We have chickens in case you guys are not necessarily longtime listeners. We have chickens in the mountains. So um, it's a thing. Anyway, we have I've made a chicken. I made a stingray. I'm working on a turtle. You know, just, just, just totally zoning out. So I know that I got my reading done because I've been hyper fixating on creating stuff. Oh, I finished a blanket. Um, hyper fixating on... Uh, a creating stuffed animals, et cetera, um, with little tiny knots of magic and setting a lot of intentions. So I made the two baphomets that I made, this pink one down here, and then I have a blue and black one that's upstairs are very protectory energy too. But I've been listening to books as I've been doing it, which has been very fun. So I conquered a lot of reading purely because of this, which is nice. Um, do you want to start us off on what you've read though? Sure. I'll circle into what I've read because I'm going to vent about one of those things I've read. <laughs> So fiction wise, I finished Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Yes. And I'm still on vacation from that. So yes. I got to read because nothing was going to stop me from reading Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands. Loved yes. it. Oh my gosh. So good. So much that we actually took uh, in my book club, which is understanding magic, reading ancient sources or, you know, learning magic through reading and, and getting all that research done that you'll be glad you had later. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually decided that occasionally we are going to do fiction books because they do a really great job of showing and embodying how you would use magic. And so we mm -hmm. did the Emily Wilde duology this month in the book club to understand how to work with Faye better because Perfect. she's got excellent footnotes and just, it's a great example. Next month we're doing uh, Mysteries of the Dark Moon Goddess by mm -hmm. George, which I refer to all the time, has an audiobook mm -hmm. and everything. So it's nonfiction, but it's really great women's history, astrology stuff. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got into my master's degree. So I've been reading the story of Christianity, volume one, which is literally the whole history of how Christianity developed. I'm very pleased that it's a non-bias account. So I'm about 30% through this giant textbook, which is huge because I never did the reading in college. <laughs> so I'm very proud of myself right now. And to prepare for Egypt, I read What the River Knows by Isabel Ibn Ibn Ibanez, Ibanez. I just wanted to make sure I said that right. Hopefully I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently reading Master of Gin uh, by Jelly, Jelly Jelly Clark. Okay, thank you. P. Jelly mm -hmm. Clark. And then also because I'm going back to school and I want to have better counseling skills and uh, therapy skills, I'm reading On Grief and Grieving mm -hmm. by um, the person who came up with the five stages of grief, Elizabeth Kubler-Roth and David Kessler. And then also, which is really helping with uh, the focus that we have for sacred spaces. I'm reading The Language of Emotions by Clara McLaren. So you can tell I've got my study vibes going. Um, yeah. You really do. You're getting into it on a study <laughs> level. Like really but serious. I also it? bought Young's uh, Red Book <laughs> because I'm like, there's so much astrology and psychology and- It's amazing. You're the yeah. second person in the last week to tell me that you bought Young's Red Book. Yeah, I found so. the study- like leather bound collector's edition thing at Barnes and Noble. And I was like, I'm going to need this because astrologers talk about it. And uh, there's a lot of Gnostic references in it. So it, it kind of like converges on a lot of my special interests. Interesting. Yeah. I'm going to vicariously read it through you, I think. Okay. I will tell you all about it. <laughs> if I actually get it out of the closet. Yeah. It's one of those things that I know that I won't be able to get myself to get through and that's okay. I'm probably going to end up doing it piecemeal. That or we'll mm -hmm. get the book club together and that will motivate me. <laughs> yeah, because it's a doozy. It is. It's dense. Yeah. So dense. Uh, okay. Um, I finished Master of Jinn because I think on the last book end, you're talking about how it's almost done mm -hmm. with Master of Jinn. So I finished Master of Jinn by P. Jelly Clark. Um, it's really good. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. It's very, very high vibe. Um, I love the fallible nature of spirits that occur in it and showing it in that way there's this one scene and i love it with all of my heart and made me cry of how and chris is not there yet so i'm not gonna spoil anything but it's so deeply what it's like when talking to deities and spirit etc and it represents it so well um 
you when you get there like you laugh the whole time but it's also just made me teary because I was like thank you for this amazing representation of this the, like the writing is amazing I mm-hmm. really love it like even the the side commentary is just so good like we were all thinking it and then uh-huh. all put in there it's great yeah there's this one scene with a whole bunch of gin and I love it it's probably one of my top five scenes of like spiritual magical stuff ever that I've read because it's just so it's so accurate it's so accurate of you know people think there's these big bad things and then the way they actually talk you're like oh okay uh, <laughs> it's so good it's so good and then I read the novella um like prequel novella which is literally like an hour long audiobook it's so fast um it really wasn't super worth it I think it was just released for promotional material to get people hyped for master of gin i'm pretty sure just from my own publishing standpoint i'm pretty sure yeah. that's what it is um is it worth reading not really to be totally honest you really don't need to read it um at all uh but i read it anyway it was an hour <laughs> that happened uh but it was again just to build off of uh, master of gin and then i was gonna read what the river knows oh no then i was gonna read emily wilde's mouth of the Everland, which i did end up reading but i was gonna read that first um and for some reason, I couldn't. It, wouldn't, it wasn't downloaded. Um, I was like, well, okay, I guess I'll read Fourth Wing. Um, <laughs> because in a series of like three weeks, I had, I think, six different people that are in my immediate circles recommend it to me and tell me I, I should read it and that it's a, it's a fun journey. Um, mm-hmm. It's another, it's a reality TV show of a fantasy book for sure. So don't go into it with high expectations that it's going to be masterfully written. It's not um but it's a fun it's a fun adventure it's a very fun adventure um it's a page turner I read it really quickly which I loved uh I I needed something that was going to be read really quickly and and just really fun um I love the world I love the politics of the world I love the concept of the world I think it's really good and I think she's really on to something with that um the main character is fucking insufferable I cannot stand her. She is awful. Reading a whole book from her perspective was just nails on a chalkboard. She just sucks. She just sucks in my opinion. And I know that's not everyone's opinion, but I think she sucks. That being said, some of the twists I think are really good twists and really well executed twists. I did not see them coming. And I, the way she sets it up is you think you see the twist coming and then um, it, 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 it incorrect. You didn't, you got it wrong. Um, and it's really well done in that way. I, I loved it. Cause she kind of like dangles two different apples in front of you and then totally turns it on its head. And I love that. Um, so it was done really well there. I will say that um, the dragons in this book are fairly Boris approved. So Boris is my dragon guide and he's very opinionated on how dragons are represented in media. And he loved the dragon representation in fourth wing. He said that that was very, very accurate in a lot of ways, not a hundred percent, but as far as dragons and media are represented, he's about it. He really likes how they're represented and how to train your dragon, but mm-hmm. he really liked it in this too, which was cool. And he, his frustration with the how to train your dragon dragons is they they aren't able to communicate as intelligent as they are. Um, and that bothers him. But this book, the dragons are able to communicate, but he, they also limit them in different ways. But he loves that they're not wyverns. Let's just put it that way. Very stoked that they aren't wyverns. Um then I read Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands, which is phenomenal. You already know. So good. You already know. It's so good. It's so good. Wendell is my one of my all-time favorite fictional characters ever. Mm-hmm. Ever. I feel yeah. about him, I think, the way a lot of people feel about the characters in Harry Potter, um, which mm-hmm. I don't have a connection to. But to him, so much connection. Love him. And Emily, too. I mean, I love them both. I think they're two of my favorite fictional characters that exist, period. But it's so good. <laughs> just amazing um yeah and then i just started when women were when women were dragons which is a really cool take on the f- journey of being a woman um and the oppression women have faced and it takes place in the 1950s um and basically it's there was a mass dragoning that it, that occurred in the 1950s where um a bunch of women turned into dragons and ate their abusive partners and now the government's trying to cover it up um and it's really interesting it's it's cool so far so uh, it's funny i read all of that in the tv show the magicians which i've recommended mm-hmm. a bunch uh there's there's an episode like that ish too 
Okay. Yeah. It's very neat. I highly recommend it. And it's pulled from the perspective of a little girl who was a, she was a little girl or a woman now, but she was a little girl when um, the women dragoned and you know, she's trying to make sense of her own memories and mm-hmm. through that. Um, it's cool. I like it. And it's a really lovely scathing commentary on our society. <laughs> uh through the lens of dragons which is nifty which is very nifty um one other thing i did want to say too touching back on the fourth wing thing i think the main character is so insufferable not because of her personality i mean that's part of it but i do think that there is a current uptick and i just want to make this point um just to, to give you guys kind of another critical lens to read things through there's a huge uptick in adults reading ya fiction and as a response to that, more adults have written YA fiction because they know that it is something that people are interested in or new adult. So young adult or new adult. Um, think Hunger Games, think Divergent, think that those are those are YA, right? They're, they're teenagers doing stuff. Um, and in that, the people, spe- specifically white women, are writing um, these characters not through putting themselves in the actual character's shoes and being like, what reactions would I have had when I was a teenager or young adult? And instead are writing them through the lens of how they, they as 40 year old women are perceiving teenagers or young adults. So we're getting these really insufferable main characters that aren't fully fleshed. They aren't baked, whatever, because we're getting 40 year old women's perceptions of how a moody, horny angsty teenager would act instead of them remembering how they actually acted at that age um and it's a plague on the reading world in my opinion so i just need to throw that in there because there's a lot of books especially right now that are just getting wrecked because the main character is written in this way and it sucks yeah you know what i mean oh totally (laughs) So just if, especially with a lot of the books that are coming out right now, TikTok based books, things like that, they they'll either have the problem of self insert to a fault, yep. or they'll have the problem of such self disconnection, also to a fault, and it's yucky. Certain things are so written to market, there's no heart in them. Yeah. You know the, the the other issue that's coming out with TikTok based books is mm-hmm. if you can make it viral on TikTok, it's going to sell well. So just get a book really quickly out there, which I hear is one of the, the troubles that happened with the second book from the Fourth Wing Saga. Correct. And I won't so read much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, my, it. My husband blew DNF'd. up on TikTok and yeah. he DNF'd. He DNF'd. He said he couldn't. No. Now I'm even less motivated to read it. I know it's supposed to be a five book series uh, and wow. I probably will pick the second book up if the third book if gets better reviews i do think they're going to take more time with the third book because the second boot book got uh literally shit on because it was rushed so fast um that being said if they do accidental pregnancy or love triangle i will dnf the whole fucking series yes uh just gonna throw that out there to the universe if you want me to read this don't let her do that yeah <laughs> please inspire her otherwise mm-hmm Uh, uh. anyway it's been a really good reading month it's been a really good reading month i really like that also once krista reads fourth wing we're probably going to do a episode talking about the gallic language Mm -hmm. because uh fourth wing fucked that up and we want to reconcile some of that uh since the author won't do what we're going to so i'm not sure that is the next on my reading list so soon yeah (laughs) Yeah. and you'll get a whole episode of us probably bitching about it (laughs) Honestly, it's fun. If you want a fun book that's going to make you feel good reading and just like get you into reading again and you've been in the slump, it's, it'll pull you out. It's a great slump. Slump crusher. Yeah, it's looking like that'll be the one I'll be reading while we're in Egypt. So it'll be nice for, you know, the transitions and transits and things to be able to transits as in like actual getting from place to place, not astrology. <laughs> I have to make that mm. that uh, differentiation. But I yeah. wonder what I will be reading when we're in Egypt. Because I'll be done with When Women Were Dragons for sure. Mm-hmm. So, ooh, I got to figure out what my yeah. Egypt reading book is going to be. Well, now I'm excited. I don't know what it's going to be, though. So now I'm paralyzed also. But it's cool. 
Yeah, I'm probably going to download at least two on the the e-reader and a couple audiobook things to be able to make sure that if I finish one, I have something to pick it up with because mm-hmm. what I'll do with the silence in my brain that doesn't actually exist. So like when the silence is there and something fills it, I'd rather fill it with an audiobook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. AD. I'm a per- <laughs> perpetual audiobook person forever. And I don't need time in between. I know a lot of people do. I don't. <laughs> So it'll be like, I literally finished Emily Wilde and within 10 minutes started when we her dragon. Like it doesn't, I don't need that overlap typically, unless it like ripped my heart out. Like 10,000 doors of January, I needed some time. Light from Uncommon Stars, I needed some time. Yeah. Usually not so much. <laughs> I completely empathize. It's just like, bam, bam, bam. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, I don't know why I'm being pushed to say this, but the last note, I was going through the Phasma recordings from Sacred Spaces. And someone called me when I was talking about um, channeled history or whatever. Someone yelled at me and called me a church burner. And I thought that was really fun. I would like a word with them. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was so funny. And I feel like I need to put it on like a coffee mug. Right? Church burner. Oh. Um, so people had oh, opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there were some beings that had well, opinions on our talk. One that was referring to heaven during another uh, talk. Well, I know that heaven one was very gentle and sweet. Uh, uh, the one that called good. me a church burner was. <laughs> Maybe hasn't quite gotten to the heaven part yet. <laughs> uh huh. Um, it was definitely. It was really interesting because there was some some beings that were really critiquing a lot of our talks because you could yeah. tell they were just in the area, kind of, and hanging out. Yeah, and we others had that spiritual were all about hecklers. It. The people who were there physically were kind. Mm-hmm. The spirits heckled a bit, which was really funny. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you all because that made my day. I thought it was hilarious. Church burner. <laughs> just for the record, never burned a church. Um, <laughs> and I don't think I've done it in any of my past lives either. I have no record of any church burning occurring. So. <laughs> Back into the space. The karma and the um, conscience are clear. Right. But hope that brightens your day a little bit. Thank you guys so much for listening. We appreciate each and every one of you. Um, it's awesome. And um, we are going to Egypt very soon. We will probably do a pre and post sort of episode to give you the the understanding of what we're doing and then how it went. Mm-hmm. Um, because we know that's a the situation. Yeah, we know that's a big deal trip for a lot of people. A lot of people would love to go to Egypt and it's like a very spiritual place that's, you know, really privileged that we get to go there and experience that. Um, But we do really want to talk about it. So that'll probably be next week's episode, the week after we're probably going to address that a little bit more deeply. um, So, you know, a little bit more about what we're doing in Egypt, why we're going to Egypt um, and how we're handling the current situation in in about Egypt and why we made the decision to continue on with this trip then and how we're going to help. So just to include that there. And then of course, we'll talk about all the stuff that happens in Egypt, which is going to be a lot, especially considering how we just talked about all these spiritual things that are like coming to your house. We're now going to like one of the spiritual epicenters during this time. So it's going to be an adventure. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so just to address that too, in case someone was like, oh, what? That's, we're going to talk about it. Um, But yeah, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for sharing the space. And we hope that you take all of this energy and you... Go make, make some, some magic. magic. I don't know. That I couldn't hear you. You cut out a little bit for me. So oh, I don't know. No, but it was perfect on my end. <laughs> well, maybe it'll be perfect then. <laughs> <laughs>